Today was a long day, so I decided to go grab a beer. I hope I don't get murdered on my walk. As I walked downtown, it seemed like everybody else also had a long day, as the lines were pretty long. This guy is about to have an even longer day. I finally arrived at the brew, which is conveniently located by a group of dumpsters. I was hoping to order a locally brewed beer, but the brew actually doesn't brew beer. So instead, I got a Miller Lite. While the Miller Lite was delicious, I felt like I was missing the local beer taste. I knew my professor brewed beer, so I decided to send him a text, asking if I could come and interview him the next day, to which he kindly responded with a resounding short. The music was great, and the beer even better, but I decided it was time to go home and get a good night's rest. I hope I don't get murdered on my walk home. The next morning was the big day. I was on my way to learn about beer. I hope Rod isn't gonna murder me. My name's Rod Bingerman. I'm a associate teaching professor of filmmaking at uh, Penn State University, and I, one of my hobbies is making home brew. Uh, I'm kind of a beer lover, and uh, I've been doing it for 30 years, 31 years, I think, is what I figured out. What makes my brews unique? Uh, love. No, I, <laughs> I don't know. Brewing's a lot like cooking, you know, and uh, even when I cook, I tend to go off recipe a little bit. Uh, or something I like or you know I'm a little adventurous and it's also a bit of oh well I don't have that but this would work you know so I would say any brew you get at, at Shea Bing is uh, probably unique because it's not quite right to variety <laughs> but it's close you know so so this is the mash stage all right uh, so this is kind of the basic alcohol part of the beer and sort of flavor and a little bit uh, aroma happens and then the second phase will be what's called sparging so that is that's a grain rinse and it adds kind of uh, body to the beer a little more color and uh, just kind of takes the hard edge off the off the sugars part three and that's basically you're boiling all the sugars down so that they sort of combine and you're bittering at the same time so like hops are bittering agents part four fermenting <laughs> all right uh, and that will be different whether it's ale or uh, lager shorter for ale longer for lager and then finally is what i call seasoning which is you keg the beer and sometimes it's good to let it settle out for a week 10 days two weeks i think the irish red i have right now seasoned about two and a half weeks of course i got covid so i couldn't drink it so those are the five parts of the process you know so. yeah as he was taking me down to his basement, I couldn't help but think, is he going to murder me? Nothing against Rod, he's a great guy and isn't capable of something like that. But still, the question remained, is he going to murder me? I mean, there have been a lot of mysterious murders in State College. The murder in the Penn State Stacks is one of the most eerie and mysterious murders I can think of. It was a cold and quiet Thanksgiving week on the Penn State main campus. Betsy Yardsma of Holland, Michigan, spent part of the Thanksgiving break in Philly with her boyfriend before returning back to State College to finish an assignment in the Penn State stacks. It was November 28, 1969, when 22 year old Betsy was stabbed to death in the stacks of the Petit Library.
52 years later, and her killer has yet to be caught. Many questions arise when I hear stories like hers. What happened? Why was Betsy murdered? Was she targeted? Why did she have to die? I'd like to try and answer at least one question. Why do people murder? Hopefully, Professor Robichaud, who studies sociology and criminology, will be able to provide some insight. The legal definition in Pennsylvania, is, at least for first-degree murder, is um, murder is an intentional killing. So there's, there's things called predisposers, which are um, traits of individuals that may make them more likely to commit criminal acts. It's really hard to study predisposers and people. In an ideal world, we'd have like all this information on thousands and thousands of people, and then we would see what traits predict who murders. But murder is, is ultimately a rare crime, and so there's no good study that, that looks at, at people before they become murderers. Where we have data on the relationship between murder and victim, we find that most murderers actually know their victims in some way. Being murdered by a stranger is, is pretty rare. We see lots of different motivations for murder. And if you look at mass shooters, for example, revenge tends to be a very common motive. We know with some serial killers that people do sometimes kill for pleasure, that um, based on their accounts, it's often things that... that I guess anyone could be a murderer including myself. But I know I'm not. So I guess I'm just going to have to trust that Rod isn't going to murder me. Anyways, this is what he has to say about people who want to get into beer brewing. Just, just, you have to recognize that like, particularly like we're here today, it's like, there's a lot of waiting around. It's like war. It's 98% of weight, 2% terror, but, you know, um, but it's worth it, you know, because yeah, it'll take me half the day to make this, but then I can enjoy it for weeks, you know, and, and boy, you know, how, how many things can you say that about, you know, so that's the cool thing about it. Before I left, he wanted to show me the fermenter. Our boy, right, and uh, you can get these in five gallons, like if you buy, if you have a water dispenser. It seems like the beer making process relies on patience, but mainly trust. Rod trusts his creative beer brewing process to create a delicious brew. Just like I had to trust that he wasn't going to murder me. They have to trust that once they get inside, they're going to have time of their lives. And I have to trust that the bar, which is conveniently located by a group of dumpsters, will have good beer for after a long day. I hope I don't get murdered in there.